Oh, hi! This week, I'm gonna make a tote bag. It seems like the simplest of the bags to make. There's no zippers or closures involved. I have done much more difficult versions and I wanna try the easy one. This is gonna have a lining though, so it's gonna be like a little more complicated than just a regular ass tote bag, but I very much want to use these two fabrics together. These were gifted by my lovely fairy god Cheryl. They're just in these bonkers colors. Is this not like the weirdest, trippiest shit? Yes, it's Bambi and Thumper. I don't understand. I enjoy looking at it, so I'm gonna make a bag. It's actually gonna be a gift for someone that has no internet presence. So if for some reason you end up watching this, hi, hello, you're one of my favorite human beings. I love you very much and thank you for being there for me all the time. Here's what you need. Yes, it's like 5 p.m. and I am still drinking my coffee from this morning. I get asked that a lot. Like when I'm doing live streams and stuff, I'll have a coffee cup at the start and sometimes I will live stream for a couple hours and at the end they'll be like, is that still the same coffee? You know, say it's 1 p.m. when it's wrapping up. Like, this is the same coffee I poured myself at like six o'clock this morning. <laughs> I don't drink a lot of coffee, but I am often drinking coffee because I am very slow about it. I mean, I'm like that with pretty much every drink I ever have. That's why I always have so many around me. I usually have a water, I have a coffee, and then, you know, kind of the wild card drink, be it a seltzer, some juice, an actual beer. Hmm, should I have one of those? I did have a very small glass of wine while I was playing Stardew Valley with my friends Grant and Sama on Grant's Twitch channel. He's been streaming a couple times a week and he's just one of my favorite people in the whole world. Getting to hang out with him and Sama, one of my other favorite people in the whole world. I'm just surrounded by good eggs and I'm very, very thankful for that. But yeah, we got to play games together and it was awesome. I think we're planning to do that more. So if you want to see Grant in general, but also see me being very bad at video games and potentially other things in future, I'll link to his Twitch channel below because it's just, it's always a good time. I really like having long form content playing while I'm working. I assume some of you probably just have me rambling in the background while you're working on your own shit too. So that's some of my favorite stuff to watch and have on. Anyways, I need an outer fabric. I'm picking here. I mean, you can self line it, I suppose. We also need fabric for lining. These are both kind of sheer. So I'm gonna add another layer, which we'll call an underlining and they're all similar weight. I'm gonna be limited by the smallest piece of fabric that I have. I'm gonna cut this piece in half. That's gonna tell me how big the rest of the bag's gonna be. If you want a separate fabric for the handles, cause we're gonna make two straps, pick that out. I'm just gonna use more of this fabric or this one. I'm undecided, we'll see. But yeah, so two pieces for the outer, two pieces for the lining. I'm also adding two extra pieces for the underlining and then enough fabric to make yourself two straps. I will write down all of these numbers and do one of my little pattern sketch things in one of my notebooks and post it up on my Patreon. You don't have to be contributing to it to access it. I have a bunch of free patterns up there. It's just like the easiest hub to keep all of that stuff. Also, the entire reason I get to do stuff on this channel is because of my patrons. So it's entirely thanks to them that I'm able to put free patterns up. So yeah, thanks y'all. Okay, I'm gonna cut all this stuff up. Oh, <gasps> you guys, I haven't shown you the cutting table yet. Okay, we're going on like a little mini field trip real quick. Look at this workbench I get to cut fabric on now. I am the luckiest bean. I've never had a cutting surface that wasn't just the floor. So, um, I'm still kind of freaking out about it. And you can see it, no, there. And now we're back in my sewing room. So it's even, it's even in the same area. I am the most spoiled human being. Okay, so I cut the pieces. I have my outer pieces and I already basted the underlining to this just so it's a little more opaque. Not that it would be a huge deal if like this gingham showed through the white patches on this fabric because there's already so much plaid and stuff happening, but I have it, so why not use it? I have my two outer pieces, two lining pieces, and my two strap pieces. Again, I'll give measurements and everything on the Patreon feed if you want actual numbers, but you can kind of just work with whatever you have. That's the joy of bag making I have found is if you have small pieces to fuck around with, you can make them work. Oh, also as far as stuff that you're gonna need, like scissors, pins, matching thread, sewing machine, the usual, an iron, iron will be helpful. Uh, ironing board perhaps, also helpful. Uh, that, that'll probably do it, huh? So the first thing I'm gonna do, cause it is always my least favorite thing when it's part of a project, is I'm gonna make these loops. So these are a little bit more than three inches wide. I think they're three and a half inches wide. So I'm gonna fold it in half, right sides together, and stitch in somewhere between quarter inch to a half inch 
when I stitch half an inch in, I trim it down after so that it is about a quarter inch. So why not just stitch it a quarter inch? So I'm gonna do that along the long edge of both of these strips. So I'm gonna leave the short ends open. Okay, also this material is, is sheer and pretty thin, pretty lightweight. It kept wanting to gather up a little bit. So I'm trying the tissue paper thing. I'm just sewing the, the actual strip like I normally would, but I just laid a sheet of tissue paper underneath. It seems to be going okay so far. I've never done this somehow even though I've worked with really finicky fabrics. Okay, I have to say something I never see people talk about in videos when they've done the tissue paper, so I have like both my strips here, is the cleanup process. Oh, you know, yeah, it's um, I thought there would be a lot more bits. You know when you like pull a sheet of paper out of a spiral bound notebook, and even though it has the perforation, you always get those little fucking bits stuck between each and every ring of the spiral. I was expecting this to be like that. Not making as much of a mess. I do in fact recommend doing this. Okay, point turn time, baby. I've actually been having luck with the bodkin today. I was making some other stuff that needed some tubes. It went all right. So I don't know if you ever use one of these and it's possible I'm not even using it correctly, but it has almost like a latch hook situation at the top where there's a little loop and there's this little flappy dude. Here, let's do it this way so you can actually see what the fuck I'm talking about. So make sure this is laying flat, loop the fabric in that little turn. Then I push the fabric so that the prong pokes out. If you can see it there, that it's kind of coming through. And then I let it close and then I start pulling and hopefully it doesn't let go. Just try to keep tension on the bodkin at all times so it doesn't loosen that little flappy guy. I mean, once you get that hook to end through, you can get rid of the bodkin and just grab that end and pull it. Hell yeah. The number of times I have spent like half the project time just turning loops really puts a damper on, on a project sometimes. <laughs> this has just been moments of my day. So I'm gonna iron these flat. I'm gonna have the seam just to like the underside. So I'm gonna press it to the middle, but do it to an edge or, or wherever you want. Okay, straps have been made and have been pressed down. Cool, cool. Now we're gonna make the outer part. So I'm just gonna put my two outer pieces, make sure if there's a print that they're both facing the right way. So like, I want this to be the top of the bag and the print is going the right direction. What a shocker. So I'm gonna put these right sides together and now I'm gonna stitch down across the bottom up the other side. Don't touch the top because then you have an empty pillow form and not a bag. <laughs> I'm gonna take my lining pieces and do the same thing, right sides together. Just do the sides and the bottom. Don't go around the top. All right, so now I'm gonna leave my lining inside out, but I'm gonna take the outer bag portion. I'm gonna turn this right side out. I'm gonna press these just so it'll lay a little crisper. All right, nice crisp edges. I'm now going to take these straps, decide how far in I want them to go. Maybe I should lay this on the table so you can actually see what the fuck I'm doing. Okay, so here's my bag, right sides out. I'm gonna take my strap, make sure it's not twisted. You're basically doing right sides together here. Measure over, let's say, yeah, at, uh, at the two inch mark, like the center of the strap will be at the two inch mark. And then I'm gonna pin and then just do the same on the other side. Then I can flip this over, take the other strap. And actually, rather than measuring, I can just hold it up here, line it up like that. All right, and now we're gonna take our lining that is still inside out. And I'm gonna tuck all of this in here, being sure that the strap bits aren't coming up this way. We want it to lay flat. Now, hopefully I didn't totally botch this whole thing. If I line up the side seams, I'm just gonna have the lining seam allowance going one way and having the outer bag seam allowance going the other. So there's not like a ton of bulk in the same spot. Toss a pin in. I only stabbed myself a little bit just there. So not a crisis. It also doesn't count as an actual sewing project unless you impale yourself at least once. Them's the rules. I didn't make them up. These are actually lining up pretty well. You can pin as many times as you want to make sure everything's laying nice and flat. I'm leaving a gap here. I'm gonna say four or five inches so that I can turn everything out. I'm gonna stitch around the rest of this. Then we'll do the bag birthing process, which is always a fun time because that's when you figure out whether or not you fucked it up or not. Okay, now we got everything else stitched except this little gap here. The moment of truth. Pull the outer shell through first. There's our straps looking beautiful. That can get flipped out that way. The corners, it doesn't matter. Big dumb hand out of there. And that's gonna look like this. Then you just pop the lining inside and tuck the corners in where it's supposed to go. I got little straps up top here. You know, it's not too bad. Oh, 
I'm excited. Okay, I'm just gonna close up this gap with some top stitching, but I'm also gonna make a point to top stitch around the rest of this. Tuck the lining down just that littlest bit so that it's not peeking out from the front side. Do some back tacking with the top stitching over where the straps are just to really reinforce it because that's where all the stress is gonna be on the bag. All right, y'all, just to show you what the top stitching looks like, nice and close up. Here's it from the inside, not too bad. And I actually really like that it is fully reversible. So if you want it to look more like normal ass picnic-y and not fucking horror show Bambi fabric, you'd be like, oh, so cute, little, little picnic chic. And then it's not until you peek inside, get, get to know her a little that you realize like, oh, you're a real fucking weirdo, huh? The beauty of sewing your own stuff is you get to add a lot of personality to it. <laughs> I really hope she likes this because this was super fun to put together. I have a bunch more of this fabric, so I don't know if this is something anyone has interest in me making for my Etsy shop. But yeah, let me know if you're interested because I have more of this fabric and it was very fun to make. Speaking of my Etsy, if you have any interest in checking it out, I'll put a link to that in the description, as well as, as I mentioned earlier in the video, my patrons are the ones that make all of this shit happen and give me the time to workshop new shit and take the time to film the videos and upgrade my sewing space as shown by the cutting table and everything. I mean, the cutting mats that are over there were also gifted by my fairy god Cheryl because she is too fucking good to me and she has very generously upped my sewing game just by providing me with really, really helpful stuff as well as a ton of guidance from so many of you, even your comments about just how you handle your own sewing projects, it's been wildly helpful. And I've gotten iron cleaner from Anna, and I know I harp on them all the time, but the cam snaps that Jeanette sent me, I, I still can't believe I had never considered a closure like that. It, fucking game changer, man. I am actually considering putting one of those little plastic snaps like in the middle here, because I do like when you can have a tote bag that has the option of staying completely open, but you can also seal some stuff in it just so it's not falling out when you toss it in your car or whatever. But yeah, these are all of my rad patrons here. There's so many of them, and I just feel in incredibly spoiled and lucky, as I already said, but it's true. Super fucking thankful for every single one of you. If you have any interest in joining the gang, I will link to my Patreon at the end and also in the description. There are links to other things like my coffee page and, you know, free shit like my Instagram and Twitter if you want to hang out over there. As for my suggestion this week for a black YouTuber to go check out, I cannot recommend Ska Tune Network enough. I mean, he has original music. He also plays Ska songs on it. He has this huge Streetlight Manifesto Nintendo cartridge poster fabric banner thing. And I've never been more envious of someone's like wall decor, but I, uh, I, I very much enjoy his music taste from what he has on display. But I'll also do ska covers of really great songs like Paramore jams and shit, but also theme songs like Beetlejuice. Hopefully that's somewhere on the screen by now, and I will also link to him in the description. Basically lots of things to do in the description if you have some time. As for me, I will be back here with another video next Friday. Thank you so much for hanging out! Weird how when you've been seeing people do the same technique for like 12 goddamn years on YouTube, it, there's something to it.